we take the first and the last stanza. sake of our lives change our life change our land oh lord grant us grace and peace grant us light and life make us walk and pray for our land make us walk make us walk make us sing for the peace of a lamb make us seek our progress and make rejoice make us walk and pray for a lamb the last stanza we are here sake of our life establish our foundation O oh Lord grant us your word deep into our souls make us walk and pray for our lamb make us walk make us walk make us walk make us see for the of a land make us seek our progress and just solemnly now we take the chorus solemnly and meditatively make us walk make us walk make us walk make us seek for the peace of a land Loud and make us walk and pray for our land. Amen. Amen. Please check the chorus. The first one says, Make us walk, make us walk. Make us seek for the peace of our land, not Lord. Watch that. Thank you. I made a grave omission and it was never deliberate. I have the pleasure of introducing our host conference president, Reverend Dr. Paul Kola Wale. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. I would like to invite our Father and the Lord, the Vice President Ministerial. Reverend Dr. Dixon O.E. Madoe to come and take us on the next talk. Mobilizing men for prayer, peace, and progress. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Please let us pray. Lord, we submit to your authority. We submit unto you, Spirit of the Living God. That this moment, you will guide our hearts. You will refresh us from above. Open our eyes to discover things that we need to discover to move forward as laborers in your vineyard. We pray, O oh God, that in this era, we cannot afford to fail you. We cannot afford to fail ourselves. And we cannot afford to fail our denomination. Therefore, O oh God, we pray that you will repackage us. That we will become more useful unto you. That when our journey on earth would have been completed, we will look back with a deep sense of satisfaction and to say, indeed we have fought the good fight. May that be our portion in the name of Jesus. 
Speak to us and address us in your own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yesterday, our sister, Mrs. Babaride, uh, delivered his, her own paper on mobilizing women for work, prayer, peace, and progress. And I am to look at the other side of the coin, and that is mobilizing men for work, for prayer, for peace, and progress. How do we move men to work? How do we move men in our churches, in our associations, in our conferences, in the convention? How do we mobilize men? How do we gather our men and turn them to become a workforce? To move the work of God forward in our time. That is the concern of this presentation. And the paper is uh, in our resource booklet, page 13, some page 13. And I'll begin by saying that history was made at the last annual convention session held from April 26 to May 1, 2014, when the Nigerian Baptist Convention gathered to celebrate 100 years of existence as a convention. Even though Baptist work has been on for about 164 years in Nigeria. But as a denomination called the Nigerian Baptist Convention that started in uh, 1914, by the year 2014, we were 100 years as a corporate body. And as a student of history, the annual session held at Ibadan means so much to me. 100 years of a denomination. It was a time of celebration. It was a time of testimonies. Testimonies of advancement in church planting from the few Baptist churches we had in 1914, few Baptist associations in 1914, few uh, uh, Baptist uh, 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 denom uh, denominational department in 1914 to the level that we have come to. It was a great time to reflect on our progress, on our achievement, and to celebrate. Human resources, great leaders that have emerged in 100 years of existence as a denomination, great impact in medical ministry, in educational ministry, in social ministry, in missions activities around the globe, we actually had a lot to thank God for and to celebrate. But I tell you that as we were celebrating, it was also a cause for us to look at areas where we had failed. Areas where we did not do well. And as an individual, all through the convention session and thereafter, in my own little corner where I grew up as a Baptist, I also remembered how many Baptist people that we have lost to other denominations. In fact, some of the fast-growing uh, individual churches in Delta State today are founded by people who left us. In the early 1970s, we had an evangelistic group. We call it Baptist Preaching Society. Our leader was uh, Bishop Godwin, the current Archbishop Godwin Elmakpa. 
He's the current chairman of the South South Zone now. He was a vibrant Baptist evangelist. We grew up under him. And the era of arguments in churches. How many times should we say praise the Lord? When we say praise the Lord, should we say hallelujah? We should say amen. To hold night vigil, to have a prayer band, to hold for youth to gather for prayer was a problem. It was at that era that he pulled out. And several Baptists, they pulled along with him because we believe so much in him. But people like us, the Baptist is already inside the blood. If there's a spirit, spirit don't matter to test blood, to test a religion in blood, you will see Baptists inside my own. That is why I did not follow. But we lost great people, wonderful people, as a result of unnecessary bickery, argument, sentiment in the church of God. There were people who deliberately, who deliberately hindered growth and progress of Baptist work. For a pastor to preach a sound message of God against sin, there were some Baptist landlords who will say that this pastor must not receive salary because he has preached against their evil. Those things were there. Some pastors were kicked out of their churches. 